<laughs> coming up next. <laughs> We have a very special debut of a new show. <laughs> First time ever, we are presenting to you the remix, Love and Basketball. You've seen the film. You love it. You know it. It's iconic. You quote the lines to yourself, to your friends. Maybe you go to the basketball court and reenact certain scenes by yourself. I don't know. That could just be me. That's, I've never done that. That'd be weird. A couple times, maybe. Um, anyhow, tonight we are going to be presenting for you a live script reading of a brand new revised version of Love and Basketball. You know how Hollywood is not really into new ideas these days. They're kind of going back to revamp old things so we have actually uh you know we've been hired to work on this revival of love and basketball and so tonight we are going to be sharing with you our first script reading of this revised reprised remixed version of love and basketball <laughs> First quarter. <laughs> All right. Fade in. Baldwin Hills. Exterior. McCall House. Late morning. An upper middle class neighborhood known as the Black Beverly Hills. Big houses green grass, and caddies in every other driveway. The street is quiet until... You want to be Kareem? Camera reveals Quincy McCall, 11 years old, dribbling a basketball in front of Kelvin and Jamal, also 11. He sports a fro, a Clippers jersey, and a serious swagger. All this big boy do is stand by the basket. And Jamal, who is played by Crystal today, says, <laughs> Yo, let's shoot the hoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be blocking your stuff. I'm going to be like Dr. J. I'm going to be like my dad. He ain't a star or nothing. I don't see none of y'all sorry dad is in the NBA. Hey, look, Q. Quincy follows Kelvin's eyes to a beat up pair of Converse All-Stars approaching from next door. Walking in the kicks is a young kid in a t-shirt and tough skins and a Lakers cap pulled low. A moving van is parked in the driveway. I thought only girls was moving in. That's what my mom said. I hope he can ball. Bet he's a scrub. The kid stops at the edge of Quincy's driveway. The kid who was played by Candace. <laughs> hey. Hey. Can I play? You nice? <laughs> yeah, I'm nice. Quincy looks the kid up and down, and then. You and Calvin against me and Jamal. Quincy tosses the kid the ball. The kid pulls off the baseball cap. Brown hair tumbles down, framing a soft brown face and bright eyes. She is Monica Wright, 11 years old. Ooh. Oh man, he's a girl. <laughs> Girl can't play no ball. All better than you. Cut. <laughs> um, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. In the revised version, though, I really feel like we need more music. Um, I want to go back to what we talked about. Um, actually having the rap song Ball Better Than You um inserted into this scene i think that would be a great place for it so if you all could just 
a run ball better than you right here in the middle of the scene, we can see how that fits. Awesome, awesome, thanks. And if we could just get some music for that, I would love to hear ball better than you. <coughs> All better than you and your crew. Y'all don't even know what to do. Back up off me. You can't play me. I ball better than you. Background dancers, background dancers, go ahead in. Perfect. Keep going. Did y'all hear what I said? I ball better than you. Y'all are dead. Love it. Okay. You can go back to the script. That was great. That was great. <laughs> Quincy laughs derisively as Monica walks to the top of the driveway. What a dog. What? Monica shoots him a glare. He heard you. Uh uh. uh they only heard dog whistles. Monica starts to dribble. Jamal whistles as he walks backwards, guarding her. She throws up a shot. It's an air ball. Quincy and Jamal crack up. Kelvin rolls his eyes. Man, Quincy I'm rolling my eyes. Quincy grabs the rebound and shoots. Swish. One zip. He rolls the ball to Monica. She starts dribbling, and again, Jamal just backs up with her. She passes to Kelvin. Jamal and Quincy collapse on him, leaving Monica open under the basket. Ow. Trapped, Kelvin has no choice but to pass it back. Monica here. catches the ball and throws up a shot. It banks off the backboard and drops through the net. The Ooh. boys look at her in shock. Monica tosses the ball back to Quincy. And then Monica says, If she wasn't so busy balling, she might say one up. <laughs> <laughs> that means she was lucky. <laughs> Thank you for saying it for me. <laughs> Quincy no problem. Easily dribbles by Kelvin and lays up the ball. He throws the ball back to Monica. Told you I was nice. I'm going to be the first girl in the NBA. Monica dribbles. Jamal plays her a little tighter. Monica bounces the ball through his open legs and lays up the ball. Quincy can't believe it. Kelvin cracks up. <laughs> she dogged you. Shut up. You don't have to yell at me like that, though, because I'm your friend from before. <laughs> you said I was dogs and I didn't like it. Okay, well, you know what? How about you express your feelings to me in adjectives and not name calls? I actually, cut, cut. I really like this. Um, I think that as a teachable moment, mm -hmm. we should have all of Quincy, Quincy's friends gather together and maybe share their feelings about the toxic masculinity um, that has caused them to have a hard time expressing their real emotions with each other. That's a really good note. I'm going to take it. Thank you so much, director. Yeah. So let's let's see that play out. Yo, Q. What's up? Your boy Jamal, Big J. <laughs> and um, remember when, when uh, we were playing ball and we assumed Monica's gender off top? <laughs> yeah, so you know, sometimes I'd be looking at the hats and I'd be like, ooh, Lakers, that must be a dude. Because I didn't know that women actually like the Lakers, at least. Yeah, and I mean, I'm just saying, you know, because I've been playing with her, you know, because y'all put me with her. I, no, because I got sisters. I like girls, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, she got skills. Like, maybe, yeah. maybe we should not be so biased. I went a little and hard. Her just an idea, you know what I'm saying? Just time to put out there. Hey, um, you know what? If I could actually just get the, if I could get the invisible mic as well, I would like to also share. Go ahead, Big K. Yo. <laughs> um, big ups, you know, it's Big K, what it is, what it do. Um, I just wanted to let y'all know that I was actually in the shadows before this because I just didn't feel like I had the agency to be all in the mix. <laughs> and so... How do you feel? You know, I, I, I appreciate this venue that we setting up to tell our feelings. Yeah. 
because I was feeling bad. Nah, that's we don't normally, so normally it'd be a little weird, but it's okay this time. <laughs> Thank you for setting that stage because I, 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 I feel you on that. I, now I feel like I can express my true feelings, which is <laughs> the fact that y'all didn't accept me, but y'all saw that swoosh. Now y'all trying to come back around and, and I'm going to allow it because I, I need friends. I mean, I thought you looked cool because I saw your converse earlier and I'm really into converses. You know what I'm saying? I got a shoe problem. I'm kind of like a sneakerhead. Like they don't call us that yet, but I have like, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, no I doubt. Because smell after, good too, so, but, you know. I think after, maybe Big Q, I don't mean to call you out, dog, but is it possible that since your dad's an NBA player <laughs> and he's known for chasing first and really degrading women, is it possible that you might be overcompensating for you gonna follow in this footsteps, perhaps, big dog? Yo, it's more so of initially speaking, I was over here rocking my Clippers jersey. I saw the Lakers jersey. It was automatic beef. And see, like, you know what I mean? She had, like, the hair wrapped up and all that. I didn't know, like, when she took the hat off and the bone, the butters came down. I just saw basketball shorts. In the Lakers jersey, I was like, oh, that dude can't hoop. And I made that assumption, you know, just off of my hatred and my love for the Clippers. My And if, if, if I could also say, you know, truth be told, after we saw homegirls' uh, relaxed hair, the truth really wasn't even ascertained then because, as you know, in a few years, we're going to meet somebody named Cat Williams who has the exact same hairstyle, whose pronouns are he, him. So what it is. And then also, you know what I'm saying, my my cousin that owned a stylist uh, place over off of Slauson and Chris, y'all got a really nice jerry curl. And when it get dry, it gets straight. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah. really deceiving. You, you know what I mean? Thing. So you really can't judge anybody off of their hairstyle. Big up to my cousin to with the exact same name. Hey, Big Q, one more time, the army be calling you out on the toxic masculinity. Is it possible that before... Monica took a hat off revealing her true gender identity that you already felt the attraction because the face was already feminine. So perhaps you had conflicting feelings about your sexuality because your father is a big time player, NBA player, and it's the early 80s and that's not acceptable. You didn't know how to react, big dog? No, the initial reaction was just off of the Lakers versus the Clippers because I ride by mine. You know what I mean? Like mine ain't one nothing. We still riding the pine even though we play in the same crib. But one day we gonna come up. One day... Who knows? Maybe in like the 2020s or something like that, we might have a shot, you know? I mean, 2020, that sounds fake. <laughs> to agree with Jamal, you know what I'm saying? You should let out your inner pet Riley, you know what I'm saying? And really try to identify with whatever psychosomatic issues you might be having because, you know, therapy is necessary and real loud and yeah. it's, it is going to help you later on in life. That's all I'm saying. I, 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 loved, I loved where this went. I thought that was really profound definitely want to keep that making a, a note i hope producers you were writing that down we are we're going to At keep Riley? that in the broadway run we're definitely going to keep this scene uh, i want to skip forward okay. in the script to uh page six uh internal right house bathroom late morning so we're going to skip forward a little bit here uh we've got we've got monica here we've got nathan lena camille so we're gonna go to page six. Monica leans over this. Oh, b before this scene, as as we all know, uh, Q gets very upset about Monica's basketball skills and, and my her dudes. way too hard, and she gets like a cut on her face, and it's it's very it's very unpleasant. He really needs this talk about toxic masculinity. So this is the aftermath of Monica uh, dressing her injury. Monica leans over the sink as her mother, Camille, 36, wipes the blood from her face with a washcloth. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> uh, so Nathan's part because I was ready. No, oh, girl, yeah, Nathan. <laughs> Her sister, Lena, 14, <laughs> leans in the doorway, making a face. She is a mirror of their mother with relaxed hair and painted nails. Her father, Nathan, 39, moves behind Lena, holding a box. Hey, no worry. The real Nathan's here. Uh, how, how are you feeling, Munchkin? No, no, no. Back the fuck up. Back the fuck up. <laughs> okay. I know, I know that we... I know... 
that there was some real conflict in auditions about which one of you was going to play Nathan. But, you know, I feel like why should we be limited to just one Nathan? This is this is the revival. We are debuting the show on Broadway the first time. I say, why limit the number of of black characters that we can have on stage at a time? So mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna allow multiple Nathans. I say y'all two will just figure it out. Well, what page is this now? Uh this is page <laughs> six. Uh, how are you feeling, Munchkin? <laughs> Monica nods. He smiles. Yeah, you're through. She need to stop running around like a little boy. Wait, 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 wait. I just need to know from the director, does this translate as a smile? Uh, ish. Ish. Hey, uh, other Nathan, I won't let you know I have no hard feelings, and I'm perfectly fine alternating lives with you on Broadway. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm fine. I had a little bit of Botox this morning, and my face is a little stiff. Okay, okay, okay. I'm with you, I'm with you, big dog. Cut to Nathan getting Botox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah you, you inject yourself. That's right. Oh. So, yeah, I just give you the uh, Botox you injected. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Stick it under your tongue like a thermometer now. It do us a duel. Like it's Botox and a thermometer. Good. Temperature looks good. Doctor, I don't have money to pay for. No. I was hoping I could make sweet salad dressing with you. Come back. We are on page six. Uh, Camille has just said she needs to stop running around like a little boy. She's all right. How is she all right looking the way she does? Camille, she'll be fine. Mm. He gives Monica a wink, crosses away. Monica pulls the washcloth away from her mom and starts wiping the blood herself. I'll get some ice. She exits. Lena shakes her head, follows. Monica pulls the washcloth from her face and stares into the mirror. Torn skin surrounds a small deep gash in her cheek. Seeing her latest battle scar, there's only one thing left for this little girl to do. She smiles. Internal McCall House, kitchen day. Quincy sits at the kitchen table. Writing, I am sorry, in block letters across a homemade card. His face is tight with concentration as he tries to write in a straight line. At the counter, his mom, Nona, moves a cake from its store box to a cake dish. She is 30, beautiful, with effort. She smooths the frosting with a spoon. Zeke, 32, with the height of an ego, with the height and ego of an NBA ball player, enters. He laughs. <laughs> Let me sit down. <laughs> Uh, hey. girl, who are you trying to fool, huh? Oh, look at him laughing at me. Looks up, smiles. He quickly grabs a piece of crumpled paper and tosses it to Zeke. Hell you, bitch. <laughs> Nona intercepts oh. his pass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, no, Not no. In my house. <laughs> She points back to his card. Quincy scowls, starts writing again. Nona scoops some frosting on her finger, holds it up. New neighbor. Mm. Zeke wraps his lips around her finger, sucks the frosting off. You <laughs> see there, Quincy? This is how your mom's caught me with this old fake and bake, huh? <laughs> Had me thinking I was getting me a sister who could burn. Okay, first of all, that was all. It's just a little game we play. I say, first of all, you start laughing like you did before. <laughs> Nona laughs, pulls him down for a kiss. Quincy suddenly throws down his pencil in frustration. Hey, dude, shit. Zeke and Nona pull away, stare at Quincy in shock. Well, what I tell you about using that word, huh? <sighs> Can't never be in a man's vocabulary. And why not? Because when you say can't, you ain't shit. That's right. 
So um, I actually oh, yes. want to continue with what we talked about in, uh, about inserting the music. Oh. I think this would be a great time to actually insert the song um, from the soundtrack because when you say can't, you ain't a man. Mm -hmm. oh, I said shit. I'm sorry. I said. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm I'm open, Dorian, to to rearranging and trying new things in the moment. So if you feel like that's what fits better, I encourage you to go with that. Yeah, let's all hear right, it. Right. <clears throat> Cause when you say can't means you ain't shit. Right. <laughs> Hold on, I am your mother. Don't use that language with me. How dare you? I'm so upset with you and also Zeke. Hey. Baby, baby, relax. He's just a growing boy. He's finding his way. He's trying to find his joy. Yeah, bust a move. It'll make you feel good. Come on, let's have some cake in the neighborhood. Which I baked. No, I well, can't. Rest. Didn't. <laughs> I can't be losing no more basketball games. Cause then I ain't going to make it. I just can't take it. Mm, but you, you, when you, you, want, you want to take it? You when want to take it? it? I can take it. Yeah, I am shit. No, oh, hey, don't swear around man. your mom. Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Excellent. Keep that. Um, okay, so I want to go forward a little bit. Let's go to page twelve. We know, you know, after this. They take the cake to Monica's house and Quincy knocks it over and the moms talk and bond. It's great. Um, let's go to page 12. Internal right house, Monica's room night. We've got Monica um, talking to Lena and Camille here. And we've also got uh, Nathan, I believe, in the first quarter played by Blue. So I need, I need Candace as Monica, Jada as Camille, uh, I need Tashika as Lena, and I need Blue as Nathan for this scene. Page 12. We are internal, right house, Monica's room, night. Monica sits between Lena's legs, grimacing as Lena works a comb through her freshly washed kinky hair. Monica's head flops <laughs> like a rag doll. Her eyes are wet. <laughs> she shouts ow but lena keeps tugging ow lena monica <laughs> punches her in the leg oh girl lena yanks monica's head back as camille enters carrying a yellow dress on a hanger monica sees it and her face falls camille says I am lucky I found it. Someone put your box of dresses under a pile of rags in the garbage. Monica sulks. Lena cackles in her ear. Camille has to laugh. I hate it. Up your lip. Here, I would like to see um, Monica's haiku about why she feels more comfortable in pants than in dresses. Uh, as we all know, a haiku is five, seven, and five syllables. And, um, you know, Candace, when you did this in your audition, I I felt like it was really powerful. And I just think it's something we need to have in the show. Can I just, can I just add one more thing? Hi, Ava DuVernay here. Yeah. Um, in addition to the haiku moment, I was really wondering if we could try out Camille channeling uh, a mechanic we had talked about sort of channeling a different a different vocation mm -hmm. and i would love to see camille just really channeling a mechanic gina Blank, i would also agree with that i think that is an awesome assertion Ava. you're so thanks very much thanks Amazing. very much wow. Wow. Uh, this is i wear what i want Pants are what I fucking wear. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that in this no. house. No, no. <laughs> no. I, I thought it was going really well. <laughs> no, not. 
It was not. If you came into my shop talking like that, I would take <laughs> right back out the door. And I I wear pants every day in my mechanic shop. Sometimes right. overalls when I'm feeling cute. And I wish that I could wear dresses like this. Let me live through you. I don't, maybe I shouldn't put that on you like that, but like, that's what, that's what's the real undertone of this right now. I'm going to live through you. You live through me and I live through you. We both do what the fuck we want. Wait, Mm -hmm. this isn't Freaky Friday. You got this. Oh my God. Director, director, are we okay with having a a body switch scene? Um, Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, Ava is. Let's, let's also check with Gina. Sorry. I, I like uh, it. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll let it go. I mean, it's not as I had written it, but it, it'll do. It'll do. Go, carry on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Actually, um, I want to go ahead and move us into the second quarter. The second quarter. So that was fantastic. As we know, after this, Monica and Quincy have a bit of a childhood flirtation where Quincy asks Monica to be his girl. And she's like, sure and then he wants her to sit on his bike and she's like i want to ride my own bike and he's like fine and they break up and it's it's the hint of what's to come the love the drama the back and forth so let's pick up in the second quarter but on page 16 we are in the crenshaw high school gym so we're gonna pick up right at the beginning of the second quarter I'm gonna need a uh, cue leaning in the doorway. I'm gonna need the cheerleaders. Um, I'm gonna need the referee. And of course, Monica. And um, Coach Coach Heiserman also uh, is in this scene. And um, is this where you'd like me to take over reading the uh, the stage? Yes. Please. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, <clears throat> you, need enough? you need me to lean a little bit more? Yeah, I think if about 70 degrees. Mm-hmm. That looks good. You have a need for upperclassmen? Uh, yes. Yes, I think we do. No, my neck ain't going right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Title card. Second quarter. Then 1988. Interior Crenshaw High School gym, day. A snarling black cougar glares down from a large mural. On the court below, a girls basketball playoff game. The bleachers, the bleachers are almost half full with a hyped crowd, social distancing in check. In the crowd are Monica's parents. Her father is excited and vocal. Her mom reads a book. Can I get the parents on camera? Just supporting, thanks. Her mom reads a book. It's a dictionary. Also in the stands, (laughs) also in the stands, the head coach of the Tennessee Lady Vols, Pat Summit, a fine ass brother. (laughs) Let's reset, let's just reset right there. Um, A fine behind brother leans in the doorway at a clean 70 degrees, sporting a letter jacket with an embroidered Q on the chest. He gets as much attention as the game. A couple of junior varsity cheerleaders smile his way. Cheerleaders, I need my cheerleaders, thank you. U G L Y, you ain't got no alibi. You ugly. What, what, you ugly. M A M A I. Think you that way, your mama. Your mama. Yeah. Your mama. are perfectly in sync the entire time. <laughs> On the floor, Monica dribbles down court. Just 18, her athletic figure has a few curves, but her loose jersey does little to show it off. And why would it? Because she's an athlete playing her sport. Her hair is a mess. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> these stage directions were written in the 90s her hair is a mess her knees are dark with bruises a small scar is visible on her cheek she whips a no look around the back pass to a cutting teammate under the basket who scores the crowd cheers monica defends the opposing guard like a gnat 
She knocks the ball loose and grabs it up. She goes for a layup and the opposing guard steps in front of her. Monica crashes into her, knocking both to the floor. A whistle! No basket, offensive foul, number 32. Monica leaps up. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> she cannot believe what's going on. <laughs> the referee ignores her. For what? For what? <laughs> From the sideline, Coach Heiserman waves frantically. Monica, let it go! Monica stares down the ref as she jogs back on defense, full Serena Williams mode. The opposing guard <laughs> drives the lane and puts up a shot. Monica leaps and blocks it with a taunting scream. A whistle! <laughs> Technical file number 32! <laughs> Coach Heiserman slams down his keyboard. Clipboard! <laughs> Both of them <laughs> slammed to bits. Monica charges the referee. A teammate grabs at her, but she pushes her off. What? <laughs> the referee replies, taunting. Taunting? Sub! Man, you suck! Ugh. All right, this is great. This is great. This is great. Um, I want to push forward to page 20, the internal dining room. Uh, we've got Nathan, Monica, and Camille here. So I need Crystal as Nathan, Jada as Monica, and Tiffany as Camille. Page 20, internal dining room. Interior dining room continuous. At the table, Monica is in mid-conversation with her dad. Camille and Lena start setting the table. Um, <clears throat> Dad, Dad, uh, I'm I'm gonna need you to talk to Coach for me. And what am I supposed to say to the man? <laughs> the coach was from Tennessee was there. He had me ride in the bench. You lost your head. <laughs> Showing emotion. Camille inquires. Tell her about herself. Come on, baby. <laughs> Tell her, Camille baby. says something that sounds a little bit like, so that means it's all right for you to just act like that? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I, nothing. Camille inquires. I don't know why I keep hoping you'll grow out of this tomboy thing. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, we're gonna go forward to page twenty-one, actually, to one. Right, of director, I feel like you're you're stepping on a very important line. Um, this, I feel like Monica is really just admitting that she's a lesbian right now, um, and then we just ignore that for the rest of the movie. But I feel like this line, this line, just right now, is a core part that explains the rest of the story. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Let's go um, go on, go on. Uh, but now that I've done this, I'm, I'm really going to have to put my heart and soul into it. <laughs> Monica stands up. It up. Monica stands up from the table, actually mounts the chair, stands on top of it, and announces she has an announcement to make. I won't. Why? You ask? I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Lena chokes on her drink and cracks up. I actually really like the suggestion of an alternate version where we just end the film here because Monica <laughs> has revealed her truth and I'm not sure why Quincy is necessary at this point. You know, I think I think that that's entirely valid as an alternate ending for the show that maybe she's not being sarcastic. But let's or let's, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you just listened to me for once, Monica. You realize you have a lot more going for yourself, you know? Ma, 
You're smart. You were supposed to say something five lines back. Uh -uh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. <laughs> hey, hey now. Step on that snacky talk now. <laughs> the numbers ain't labeled. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh let's go to the <laughs> Crenshaw High School gym, page twenty one. We've got Shawnee and Monica having a tete a tete, <laughs> as the French would call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you just repeat what page does the tete a tete start on? <laughs> so, page page twenty one. Uh, and we've got Tashika as Shawnee with Monica in this scene. Got it. A frenzied crowd from floor to ceiling watches Quincy explode across the court. He is the complete point guard hitting from the outside, driving to the hoop. No look passes and playing tight D. <laughs> 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 Father Zeke, now 39, stands on the sideline. It's a handy reminder that these are children. <laughs> His muscle has softened a little over the last five years of retirement. Monica sits alone in the bottom row, holding a basketball. She wears jeans and a t-shirt, and her hair is pulled back in a simple ponytail. Quincy does a killer crossover move. I want to see the killer crossover move. Please, yes. Keep going. Quincy does a killer crossover move that's well established, and his defender falls down. He lays up the ball, then taunts the player he just posterized. Behind Monica, two girls smack each other, <laughs> smack each other excitedly, just truly assaulting one another. One of them, Shawnee, 17, pretty, Slides down into the empty seat next to her. Uh, don't leave out that I got to fix this. You know? Don't do it. I thought we were doing some uh, some artistic license, but I've been requested to read this. I'll begin again. One of them, Shawnee, and I stress, 17, pretty, big chest, slides down into the empty seat next to her. Hey girl, excuse me in my big breast. <laughs> hey. Your hair looks cute like that. Monica knows she's full of shit. It doesn't respond. <laughs> so do you know who Q's asking to the spring dance, girl? Oh. Why you ask? girl you live next door who's been creeping honestly uh, there's been so many i just can't keep track <laughs> oh well can you give this to him for me <laughs> shawnee, shawnee pulls a folded note out of her bosom monica doesn't take it oh so let me understand so a few pages back, you said you was a lesbian, okay? And then I'm trying to come on these. Just because Monica is a lesbian does not mean that she likes every woman, okay? Shawnee ain't her type. Mm. Okay, well, can you give this to Q for me, please? <laughs> I do not want your booby juice. <laughs> I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> oh, is this? Is Q just a middle? Do you want me? Uh, the re the rest of the gym starts to fall away into a hazy <laughs> fog, and the two just <laughs> are focused on one another. Uh, God, when I said that you weren't my type, I just. <laughs> Maybe there's more to you than I thought, more than just those big ass boobs. Yeah. Okay, I want you to put on a red dress. <laughs> step in your high heels. Make some sweet perfume. 
dun, 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 we don't know what to do, but we're watching some porn and get unrealistic expectations and we try to do it anyway. The night will be us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh. Their parents appear. The gym comes back into focus and their parents are there. Uh, what's all this about? I, I told you, uh, I'm a lesbian, and I think me and Shawnee about the U-Haul right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So I love that we are really exploring the full potential of this script. I love that. Uh, the producers are taking lots of notes. I want to go on to page 36, which is one of the integral classic scenes from this movie. It's when our main characters actually get to the dance. We see Monica actually on a date uh, with a young man who is actually quite a bit older than her. And we just see how this interaction goes at the school dance. So that's on page 36. Um, it is inside of the Crenshaw gym interior Crenshaw gym night toward the bottom of page 36. In this scene, we've got Jason played by Tez, Monica played by Jada, Quincy played by Dorian, and Shawnee played by Tashika. And you know, the other cameos that we discussed um, will be in the scene as well. Ma. An R&B song jams through the speakers, filling the dance floor with high school kids in suits and dresses. In the middle of the floor, Quincy gets his groove on with his date, Shawnee. <laughs> Large chest. She dances so provocatively. There is no mistaking what she has in mind for later. As a child, over at the door, <laughs> Monica enters with her college date, Jason, 21 and fine. Heads turn in surprise at the sheer age of the man. Monica, Monica feels the stairs and shifts nervously. And I take your coat. You're, you're cold? Monica uh, starts to pull it off. No, no, I mean, uh, I can check it in for you. Oh, sorry. Jason pulls off her coat, revealing a dress that shows off everything Monica has been hiding. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> he checks out her frame and smiles. Your sister wasn't lying. He crosses to the coat check, leaving her alone mercifully. Angle on Quincy, who glances over from the middle of the dance floor and abruptly stops. He stares at Monica in shock. Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Quincy starts off the floor as a new song kicks in. Oh, I like this song. <laughs> until the day, until the night. <laughs> As the music sings on, angle on Monica, who sees Quincy approaching in his suit. She quickly steadies herself on her heels and brushes a curl from her face. We can pump, pump. Oh, I see you made it. To me. Yeah. You don't look half bad nowadays, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you either? <laughs> Jason returns. Quincy looks at him, surprised. Old motherfucker. What's up, Black? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the way, Black don't crack. Oh, no, it don't. It don't. Mm -hmm. I, don't, know, I, don't I don't know how to. Yeah, you know what it is. This is old school from the 70s. <laughs> Come on, on the blind, the black hand side. Come on, roll the dice, roll the dice. Yeah, get your bell bottoms on. Come on. Do the robot. 
There you go. Dang, girl. I didn't know Nike made dresses. <laughs> Monica looks at Shawnee, wrapped around Quincy. She can't believe it. I thought we had something. All right. I guess, I guess we'll see you later. Monica. Love it. Who, oh, yes. There you go. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Please. There was a more stage direction. Go on. Monica, who I should recall is actually 18 as indicated by the <laughs> by the stage directions earlier so sub apologies to the the old man but not fully <laughs> monica an 18 year old heads into the crowd with her college man and quincy watches her go all right that was excellent that was excellent let's uh let's go ahead into the the third quarter the third <laughs> quarter monica's been accepted to usc quincy is there as well they are in college together um after this dance they had um an intimate moment together where quincy uh -huh. to, yeah actually let's, let's let's get just a short clip of that moment after after the dance and you know i want this completely unscripted i just want to see the moment that quincy climbs into monica's window and they realize that what they have is something real just no scripts i just want pure raw <clears throat> emotion <clears throat> oh. I'll stay outside. it's hard climbing it's to people's nowadays Look, I don't know what to say uh, because I'm not even looking at my script and I shouldn't even have no script to try to get you, honey dip. Listen, I, I've been wrong this whole time, baby. This oh, song oh. is actually very sad. So why did they choose it for this moment? We don't know. But I've been needing you for like the longest. <laughs> Maxwell makes me feel the strongest. Hey, baby girl. I've been long. Baby girl. Ooh. Oh. I hear some footsteps <laughs> by the Timbs. I, I, I got it. I got it. Love you. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was Monica and Quincy's first romantic encounter. So we're going to see quite a bit more of them in the third quarter. Let's go to page 46 to the interior of the usc campus we've got dorian on the stage directions for this and we have uh coach miller played by candace sidra played by tiffany and upperclassmen crystal will be playing all of them so that's going to be uh page 46 we are now in the third quarter what's the top line on uh the, the directions uh that top line is championship banners hang from the ceiling. Mm. And 12 young women sit on the first two rows of the bleachers. Uh, hopefully this time they at least kind of grown type of type of situation here. Um, the eight upper class can kick back in the second row. And comfortable, confident. Monica and the other and the three other freshmen sit in front of them, giggling nervously. Coach Miller stands in front of the team. I don't know some of y'all very well yet, um, and y'all don't know me, uh, but I want you to know I'm being nice to you. <laughs> A laughter from the upperclassmen. Listen, my philosophy <laughs> simple. Hard work and sacrifice. Uh, cut, cut, cut. Um, instead of delivering what the script says about hard work and sacrifice, I I really think that this could be conveyed better through physicality. Um, so I would actually love to see some interpretive dance um, from all of our actors right now to convey Coach Miller's message that hard work and sacrifice is really the only philosophy. And if we could get some music for that too, um, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Hard work and sacrifices for your devices. Hard work and sacrifices. <laughs> work and sacrifices. Hard work and sacrifices. 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 
sacrifice Sacrifice Interest All right, thank you. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, I think it was much more effective than just delivering that uh, verbally. So Coach Miller, if you could uh, just go uh, go ahead to your next block and pick up with a few. Coach simple- Miller pauses mm-hmm. for a moment or two to let that interpretive dance sink in. Uh, and then Monica glances at her fellow classmates and their reaction. Uh, like her, a lot of cockiness, a lot of fear. A few simple rules. 11 o'clock curfew, no exceptions. Be on time, no exceptions. Attend every class, no exceptions. No <laughs> drugs, no exceptions. No alcohol, no exceptions. No getting pregnant, no exceptions. And finally- Pause, 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 pause. I'm so sorry. Hi, it's Ava. Yeah. I, I just don't know if it's really clear that you're not making exceptions. I'm wondering yeah. if we can kind of begin again. <laughs> and, you're right. and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, in, I'm feeling in my dreads that you just need to really drive home <laughs> that there are no exceptions. Can we just take it from the top of that line? Thank you. I also directed uh, Wrinkle in Time. Okay. <laughs> no fucking exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. Hey, I'm, I'm here to sell drugs to the. <laughs> no drugs. No drugs. Get those chains off the doors. No drugs. But on Black Panic, it's uh, are you sure? Because it sounds like there's some wiggle room for drugs. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Hey, Coach, can we insert someone trying to insert pregnancy somewhere in this conversation? Yeah, I was gonna say, Coach, I'm up hiding up in the rafters. Could I? I'm looking to get someone pregnant. Could I come down? <laughs> hiding up in the rafters by the banners, the championship banners. Could I come Who down? Y'all? Who raised y'all? Stacy, Stacy, I know you see me down here with your child. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's already your baby. See, this Please is why we can't have me. public. This is why we can't have public practices. You see what I'm saying? This is why. This is why. Coach, you're not gonna let me give let her see her baby for the first time. This is great. This is fantastic. Uh we've got about 10 minutes left in our rehearsal, and I do want to make sure we hit that end scene. So if we could just get, you know, all our cast in and out as needed to just sum up like the rest of the movie in like six to seven minutes, just all all the major points. You know, we've got Monica's playing ball and she and Sidra have their conflict. Quincy gets hurt. He finds out that his father is like cheating on his mom and he gets very upset and then they break up and Monica's playing ball overseas. And, and she goes to see Quincy and finds out that he's now engaged to Tyra Banks as a flight attendant. And it's a whole thing before they get to this final scene, which we are going to do. Um, but if we could just get the entire cast to just sum up all that action in like six minutes, that'd be great. Take it away. Swish, you've made a basket, but you did a pose and now it looked like this. <laughs> 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 she didn't like it, so you now you know that she's not playing, and you can't have pride on the basketball court. Um, I think I played him, and I took my clothes off on the basketball court. Did that happen? Yeah. Okay, I did that. <laughs> hey, I'm here for Monica. I met you on Black Planet. I thought we were going to have a date earlier. I didn't want to interrupt nothing. No? Okay. Quincy, here's the deal. I'm trash. I'm cheating on your mom. I have been for a long time. You you modeled your whole life after me, and I'm just not good. Who is this before or after I break my leg? I, I forgot. It's before. Okay. Uh, are I we want... doing poetry? Is this... Absolutely, a hundred percent. I'm okay. crazy now. Don't don't go to practice. I want you to break your curfew for me, please. I'm going through a crisis. I'm Monica now, but I'm a baller. I'm a baller. Wendy, I'm a baller. I got a ball right here, even though it's flat. But do you want love and basketball or love or basketball? Okay. What about love? What about love of basketball? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a really good question. Look, all I gotta say is coach hates all the freshmen, Monica. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's just the way it is. She hates all y'all. And don't take it personal. Don't think just because we play the same position, we have to compete with each other, okay? Uh, We're teammates. Guys, it's the coach. Uh, Actually, Monica's my favorite freshman ever. Sidra, uh, you're out. Monica, you're in. Thanks. 
Oh, that's yeah, yeah that's you. Oh, never let a freshman take your spot, son. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you, can answer, you can answer that email, but you can't answer the Black Planet email. I've been waiting <laughs> for a minute. Hi, hi, so sorry. Um, so we're actually at Quincy's dorm. Like, I am a girl that I thought was going to sort of enter into a situation, but like, I now see Sanaa Lathan, so I don't know where I stand. <laughs> I want to be a wingman, but I also want to be on a real live date. I don't know what to do here. Yikes. I'm a slow-mo montage of Quincy playing ball. <laughs> <laughs> slow-mo slow montage of Monica being an accountant. <laughs> Momo montage of me realizing you were Monica all along. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this the part where they both start crying in the rain, talking about how much they love each other in basketball, or, or am I too fast on that? I think that's later. <laughs> I think okay, we're almost bad. there. Let's let's get Monica's mom, Camille, giving her heartfelt lecture about the fact that actually. She should go after Quincy, even though earlier she was like, let it go. Baby, you better go take that man away from that woman that's already engaged. <laughs> I don't care if they packing up the house and the wedding tomorrow. Go get your man. Uh, the family that prays together really <laughs> stayed together. <laughs> now go get that man to give me some basketball and right. friend, baby. Right? I got to work on a play. No more. I gotta make the most rational plan to get him back. Have you thought about playing a one-on-one -on -one game for his heart? That's the perfect plan. <laughs> That's how I got your father. All right, let's go to that game. Page 108. I need uh, Tez as Quincy. Uh, let's get, um, let's, let's, I need Shamara as Monica. And uh, I believe that we had some celebrity cameos in our rewrite of this scene. So I would love to see those as well. Yeah. So am I the narrator still? Uh, yes, 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 you are. Um, and that's on page 108 with our climactic scene. What's the, what's the light at the top? Yeah. Oh, that is... Um, Okay, maybe it's page 107. Um, exterior it's right. Exterior right and McCall houses. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Monica I, drops down. I cannot find it still. So oh, sorry. I see it. I see it. I'm ready. If y'all ain't ready, jump on the train. Uh, exterior right and McCall houses continuous. Monica. Oh, shit. I thought my camera was off. <laughs> <laughs> Keep reading right. so I can do. Yeah. Sorry. Monica drops down. She moves to Quincy's mo window and knocks quietly. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> then Quincy appears. What? Well, Quincy's already there. That makes it weird. <laughs> you want me to walk it back so it reflects that Quincy is already there? Okay, Quincy appears. There you go. Bear, well, Quincy, you got some work to do. Bear, <laughs> and in a pair of shorts, he looks at her, then pulls down the window. What's going on? We need to talk. Quincy just eyeballs her. Please. Hold on. Quincy disappears for a moment, then returns, pulling on a. Really, you gonna put it on a t-shirt now? We know where. We know how this is gonna end, right? Okay. <laughs> he climbs out of his window, drops to the ground. Quincy looks at her. Damn, he's an eyeballing motherfucker. Quincy looks at her. You, at you asked me what was missing. What? From basketball. You woke me up to tell me that. It's not fun for me anymore because you're missing. Okay, no shock to anybody here, but Quincy stares at her. What I'm trying to say is... I heard enough. What I'm trying to say is... I've 
loved you since I was 11 years old and the shit won't go away. We haven't talked since college and now you want to wait two weeks before my wedding to say some shit like this? I know. I probably should have said it two weeks ago because that would have been a lot better. Quincy's still staring, but he doesn't even crack a smile, which makes the staring a little bit creepier. In fact, he <laughs> glares. This is a basketball I'm holding. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> Spalding. That's right. Yeah. That was always our little nickname. I got an endorsement deal with them. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Wilson, too. Same thing, yes. Yeah. Anyway, my shit's flat. You haven't changed a bit. You still think that the sun rises and sets on your ass. Well, guess what? It doesn't. Then why are you so upset? Because you don't pull this shit on someone right before they get married. Better late than never, right? Wrong. Oh, Quincy ain't staring no more? Okay, Quincy starts back towards the window. I'll play you! One game. One on one. For what? Your bare chested heart. All right, we're back at it. Quincy looks at her and this <laughs> then laughs at the absurdity. <laughs> you out your damn mind. So you're just gonna be word up? Very politically correct. <laughs> Very politically correct. What's that supposed to be? Psycholo psychology or psychological? <laughs> Both? <laughs> like psychological, psychology? I honestly economic. don't know what that phrase even means. I don't know why you broke up with me in college. And not that you, not that what you did wasn't messed up, but what I did was too. So if you'll forgive me, I'll forgive you. Monica, after all that stuff from my dad, I couldn't trust anybody, okay? I mean, I was lost. So you are forgiven. But that was five years ago, I've moved on. Monica moves past him, reaches through his window. He's still staring the fuck out of her, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> basketball prove it she throws the ball at his face oh what would this prove you once said that the reason i beat you was because you wanted me to so so here's my ironclad logic if I win, okay, mm -hmm. if I win, it's because deep down, you know, you're about to make the biggest mistake of your life. And deep down, you want me to stop you. And what happens when you lose? If I lose, <laughs> I'll buy you a wedding present. All right, y'all saw this coming, right? Quincy stares at her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, in this next scene, I would like dramatic Marvel movie-esque music playing in the background. And I would enjoy some interpretive dancers just randomly moving in and out through, in and out through the scene as it's going on. Do you want a narrator for this scene or just will the dance talk for it? You know, I, I think the dance will talk for itself. I think let's just do the dance and the dialogue. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but narrator, if there's a line that you feel is important, go in with it. So we'll start with uh, Monica declaring check. Oh. Check! One zip! Check! <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Right. And Quincy says, One, one. What is the bump to start me? That's a good bet. Yo, 
Game point. Where are we? That continues and has the upper hand using his size. Ooh, okay. Using his size and strength. Go ahead, Queen. See, he or seven straight. What is happening? Seven straight points. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yo, this is game point. <sighs> Monica struggles to fight back her tears. Wait, is that too far? No, that's good. Okay. Monica struggles to fight back. <laughs> Years and she picks herself up. Who knocked you oh, down? But let's but let's get Monica's or let's get Quincy's line before that. Monica has just lost the game. Everything is hopeless. And Quincy says in a pointed voice, "All's fair in love and basketball." Gosh. I'm glad you chose us. I'm your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> I'm watching through the window, so thank you. <laughs> Trying to throw the ball at your face. Boom. Oh. Monica slowly stops and turns. That was a close one. Oh. I was gonna lose my, my because <laughs> Quincy says back to being an accountant for me. <laughs> Get that hey, up. hey, 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 hey. No, no. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I gotta say this line because this is where the table turns. Monica stares at him. <laughs> <laughs> this happens for a while. Uh, I'm just gonna be quiet and let the moment happen. Oh, that's nice. That's a good stare. I want everyone to stare. I want the entire cast to stare as we wait for this line. I can't stare and read you on the narrator. I don't want to be a dick, but I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna read. Uh, how fuck am I? Oh, okay. Monica slowly walks back to him. Is she walking backwards? That's ambiguous. I feel like she's walking backwards. And Quincy delivers his last line. How about double and nothing? What? Be, 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 be. That means he's choosing me. And that's our show, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, individuals, humans, people of the internet. Thank you for watching uh -huh. um, Love and Basketball the remix we had a good time hope y'all had a good time friends anything you want to tell the people about how they can find follow support you etc you can find this woman's work on instagram at chimera underscore <laughs> I'm Crystal. You can find me on this improv baby. Last Tuesday of every month. Check out the show. I do stuff with my friends on the internet. Comedy improv, not do stuff. No. <laughs> 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 Whatever get the views up. Quick bait. Okay. Sorry. I have something. We have a guest for uh June 4th, right? Everybody get in here. Festival. So BIA overlap with Maryland Improv. We have a guest for Tastemakers. Her name is Yasmin Haskins. She's on the show, The Great American uh, Bake Off, right now. And she's going to be our guest. I'm just saying, show up. I bet you Old Bay will be involved. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, you can follow me at March Diva 317 on Instagram or my true cakewalk comedy on instagram also cakewalk has a merchandise witty tees and company.com we got some cute shorts they got us on the front and cakewalk on the back so they can be on your cakes while you walk bam 
Okay. <laughs> I'm sabotaging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on the Instagrams, the Twitters at the real Tiffany B A. Uh, a lot of stand up around the nation and improv with Stephanie on a regular basis and Velvet in the International Improv. Uh, and what's the other one? Uh, Crushing It Mondays as well as hopefully we'll get the girl out and play and do fun things soon again in person. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see you there. Follow these as well. You can find me on all the platforms at that name, exactly as it is, at Tez Yancey on all the, the, the platforms. Simple. Please don't find me. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure uh, we all reverse know psychology. where Doreen is going to say <laughs> that he can be found. Out in the box, in the East streets. Uh, see me when you see me. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that is our show. Thank you so much. I'm Stephanie Ray. You can find me with the Black Improv Alliance right here on Facebook. If you're watching us here, if you're watching on YouTube, find us on Facebook, Black Improv Alliance, or at our website, www.blackimprovalliance.com. We've got scholarships for black folks. We've got cool workshops and we do take your donations and need them. Uh, so you can find us on PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, all the things at Black Improv Alliance. We love our blackness and yours. We'll see you back here a week from today, same time, same place, Facebook, YouTube, Black Improv Alliance, Maryland Improv Collective, Highwire Improv. Catch you on the other side. Let's uh let's get that outro music. <laughs> Black Improv, mm. ready hey. to be on your job. Black Improv, yeah. ready with the ha ha ha. Black Improv, better be on your job. You better be. Black Improv, ready with the ha ha.